channel networks. So we will be starting by looking here at the channel networks, which is in a particular off-chain technology. So how do peers open a payment channel? So we have here uh, a right node A and a right and, and a left node A and a right node B, and I want to exchange coins off-chain. So it means somebody here needs to open a payment channel. So that's a block, and let's say one of the parties sets up a channel, which is uh, it's A here in this particular case, right? So he makes this is an on-chain, on-chain uh, transaction in order to open to open a channel in this in the, in, the, in the blockchain. Then at the other side there are zero coins because this guy he did not perform an on-chain transaction to top up some collateral. So at this point in time we can actually only send coins in this direction. Okay. So let's do this. 005 coins to the right. And this means we have to update here the off-chain state to this new one, right? So this one is actually outdated now. Then the right guy, B, can send back 001 coins to A, and we can, we can have to update the off-chain state, and this will be 096 and 004 coins. Then the blockchain continues on mining blocks, and at some point in time, one of these peers will close the channel, right? And when it's closed, uh, this on-chain balance here will be written uh, to the blockchain, and then the actual exchange of the coins is performed, and not before. So how does this look? Well, here you have a different representation of a payment channel. Uh, so you have a so-called parent chain, so that's the blockchain transaction, and you have an off chain, right? This is the chain that you consider to be off the chain. Um, and in this parent chain transaction here, this is actually an on-chain transaction, right? In this particular example, this node here um, funds the payment channel with 005, uh, 0 0.5, and the other guy is well with 0 0.5 of course okay so this is the funding of this particular channel and then later you can have an off-chain agreement and you can shift around the balances right so the shift around of this balance is equivalent to a transfer of 0 0.1 from uh, from this guy to this guy so what are the different channel properties that we're looking at well we have a channel setup and we have a channel close and what we want to achieve is so-called balance security. So we want that any party can always withdraw an agreed balance on chain with a dispute, right? We always want to be able to get our balance that, that was agreed uh, off chain and where we got a signature from each party. We also want to have the so-called state progression. This means we don't want to get stuck, right? So any party can enforce a state transition on chain and reach then a terminal state. So we always want to be able to exit uh, if we want uh, out of this channel and we don't want that the other party can somehow freeze the state. So what's really important is that there's a unanimous establishment, right? So you can set up a channel with somebody that doesn't want to set up a channel with you and you have a unanimous transition. So as long as there's no dispute, you, you work together collaboratively in order to to solve any um, state changes. So, but what if the parties do not agree? And let's be frank, right? Always happens that parties don't agree. So yeah, let's go through this example here. So we again, as before, right? We have a channel set up here and we have the blockchain. So there are three blocks that are being mined and here is the channel was opened here uh, by node A to node B. So now we have here two states, right? We have one and two. These are two different blockchain states. So which one is the last state? How do we tell the blockchain or how does the blockchain actually know uh, which one is the last state? So at some point in time, if we don't agree on which one is the last state, we can trigger a dispute, right? So this can be either A or B that trigger a dispute. And this will trigger a fixed dispute time period where both can provide evidence so for example, Alice can provide here an evidence here, and then later Bob can provide some evidence here. And then uh, the blockchain will, based on this evidence, the, the blockchain will decide, well, this state is the outdated state, number two is the latest state. And this is the state that I will write on chain as well. So this is, this is a particular example of how to, how to use a blockchain 
to intermediate between two parties, two mutually distrusting parties, without a third-party intermediary that is um, a centralized entity.